the moment we've all been waiting for. Sarah Nathanson, VP of Talent at Aritzia. So some fun facts. Number one, she comes from a family of five kids and she's the only non-lawyer. Jeez, that, that's definitely like, they would say that's a black sheep, but everyone has been successful in that family. Look at that, four lawyers plus a VP, that's, that's tremendous. That's pedigree right there. Number two, um, played varsity soccer at Western and holds the record for career goals scored. She's like the MJ of, of Western University, Michael Jordan. All right, cool. Uh, three, of the seven roles she's held at Aricia, none of them, except for sales, she bring me a sales associate, She's um, like, none of those jobs existed before she had them, which means that she created her own opportunities. Uh, number four, she may or may not have a pet crow. Um, <laughs> funny story about this, when I reached out to Sarah on Monday, just to kind of, you know, get to know her, we were talking and all of a sudden I heard, Kah! and I was like, what, what happened? Where is it? What was that? And she just said uh, it was like a crow that just passed by. And I thought it was actually in her house just because of how loud the sound was. So without further ado, I want to introduce Sarah Nathanson and everybody. I want you to all give Sarah an air high five and welcome her. I'm going to stop sharing my screen and also follow her on LinkedIn. Thank you so much. Can you guys hear me okay? You certainly can. Nods and thumbs up. Okay, awesome. Um, I'm so happy to be here talking to everybody. Um, I, f I have this just desperate um, internal monologue that says, I want to just talk about things that are useful and helpful to everybody. So, you know, as we go along, if anybody has any questions, please type them in or unmute and shout them out. I just, you know, whatever I can do or share that's going to be of use to you is what I want to talk about. So, um, we're talking about superpower and I, so I asked my husband, I was like, what's my superpower? Reggie wants to know I have to tell him. And, uh, he gave me a few and I was like, those are lame. So, um, I, I shared what I think my superpower is, which was very similar to what Reggie's is. And, um, you know, I have this, uh, I think it comes from sports and teamwork and knowing that you can only achieve if everyone around you achieves, but seeing in people what is special and unique about them, um, encouraging people and recognizing them for that. And then, um, helping give them the confidence to capitalize on that. And I think that's all we need is someone to believe in us. I, I firmly believe all we want, everyone, humans just want to matter, right? We just want to know that it matters if we're here or not. And somebody believing in us, it sounds so cliche, but I, I, I completely believe that that it can make the difference um, in terms of how you propel yourself forward into the world. So that is something that I really strive to make sure that people um, leave my presence. I say this to my team all the time when we interview, everybody should leave feeling good about themselves, good about you and good about the process that they've gone through, regardless of the outcome of the interview or the interaction. So that's something I feel really strongly about and always encourage my team to think about that way. Um, so I'm Sarah Nathanson living in Vancouver in my living room, not living in my living room, but I'm sitting literally on the floor in my living room. Um, I have worked at Aritzia off and on for about 18, 19, 20 years, basically since the year 2000. Um, I started by accident when I was home for a summer shopping one uh, woman shop working in the store used to go to my high school was like, do you have a summer job? I'm like, no, I'm going to go to the beach this summer. She's like, you should work. I was like, okay. And I got a job like literally that day. So something so simple as going in and, and wandering into a mall into an Aritzia in Vancouver literally like took my career um, to or changed the path of my life and took me on a career to where I am now. So one of my pieces of advice is to say yes to opportunity to opportunities that present themselves. So um, whether or not something seems exactly um, aligned with what you set out for yourself, I think what I've learned is to say yes to the things that come across your path and always endeavor to say yes, you know, within reason, you have to listen to your instincts as well. But um, uh, there's so much to be learned and gained from saying yes to opportunities as they come up. Um, 
so that's how I came to be at Aritzia. Um, as Reggie was mentioning, I've held seven different roles there and sales associate was the only one that existed before I had it. Every other one was just being part of a growing company. And I got actually into the support, into a support office role. I'd left, I was a high school teacher. So I taught high school English and I'm totally dating myself, but I did grade eight poetry and I used Lauren Hill lyrics for my class. And so the kids were like, you're so cool. I was like, right? Shout so, out to Lauren. Right? Lauren yeah. Hill. So um, I was a teacher. I loved it, but I couldn't picture myself being in a staff room forever. Like when I went to the staff room, I just didn't feel like these were my people. This is what I was supposed to be doing. And so Aritzi was just always a kind of organization that grabbed me. And so I ran into our CEO by accident and actually like literally a block from where I am right now. And he was like, Hey, uh, what are you doing these days? And I was like, I don't know. Uh, like I, I'm a teacher, but I don't know if that's what I want to do. He's like, come meet with me. So this is again, dating me. There were no assistants in those days. Um, I kept calling and leaving messages for him, for him saying it's Sarah, you told me I should come in. No one ever called me back. So finally I just said, it's Sarah, I'll be there Thursday, 9 a.m. if I don't hear back from you. Like, who does that? I don't know why I did that. And so I just showed up Thursday, 9 a.m. at the office. The receptionist was like, is he expecting you? I was like, sort of. So I just sat there and eventually he came in. I waited for him because he wasn't there for like an hour. And he came in and I followed him into his office and was just basically said, hey, I'll take on a project. I'll do work that you want me to do. And what he said was, um, okay. I'm going to give you a project. If you do a good job, you can stay. And if not, you have to leave. Is that fair? And I was like, yeah, that's fair. And um, he said, you're also here to solve problems, not create them. And that's something I always remember. Like it was so impactful. It's just such a small statement, but means a lot. So another piece of advice that I, I have is to take initiative and not let uh, speed bumps or roadblocks stop you. So again, I think it was youthful foolishness that had me say, I'm just going to be there if you don't call me back. Like, again, I would not do that today, really. Um, but sometimes that, that uh, youthful innocence can really play in your favor and make you more fearless than maybe you are the more you learn. So I think tap into that and be more fearless. Um, and then, um, taking, you know, the idea of solving problems, not creating them. When I was at Aritzia, as I was taking on different opportunities, I always ran to where I had a dog, not anymore, sadly, but she always got in like, you know, there'd be a dog fight at the beach and she would hear it. And she was like, I'm in, and she would always want to run towards it. And I was like, ah, so I would say like, run towards the noise, towards the, the chaos, towards the fire, because if you can be someone that can help quell it, put it out, solve the problem. You're always going to be someone who's going to be looked to, to work on the next thing. So um, run towards the problem and be someone that is willing to help and support um, and create solutions, regardless of how big or small that problem seems to be. And at Aritzia, that's something that's highly valued. Um, we always say, don't walk past a problem. You know, if the tap's running, you don't walk past it and assume the person that turned it on is going to turn it off. You shut it off. So you, regardless of how big or small something is, if you see it, you're accountable for it. And so you take responsibility. My other thing that I was thinking about was um, knowing what you're looking for, but being open to what you find. So oftentimes when I'm talking to people about their careers, I'll say, okay, W's and H's. These things will be different for you at different stages in your career. But what is it that you want to do? Where, that can be geography, it can be an industry, it could be a specific company. Who do you want to work with and for? Characteristics that you respond really well to. And how much money do you want to make? And those things may take different um, orders of importance depending on where you are in your career. So for me, I always say the what is the least important because I don't think I'm good at any one thing per se. I, I think I can't, I mean, I couldn't be a CFO, but there are lots of things I can be. And so the specific what was never what drove me. Um, my who drove me. So number one for me was who I work with and for, because that is just has the ability to propel me or, or, or have me shrink. And so I always drove my career based on the who. 
Um, so when I talk to people, I say, what are your W's and H's? Your what, where, who, and how much? What order would you put those in terms of priority? Um, what's non-negotiable um, and what is flexible in that? And so knowing what you're looking for is really important to define that for yourself, but being open to what you find, I think is also really important and ties into saying yes to opportunities as they come up. Um, I think that in this, at this time, if I kind of zoom in on today and, and the situation that we're in with COVID, um, a lot of organizations and individuals struggling, it's just like the all we hear about um, is the opportunity to figure out what you're really good at and create space for yourself. So number one is, you know, Reggie's taking this awesome initiative to create this and bring all of these people together. Like I would not be doing this if Reggie didn't take the initiative to do this and then to make it easy for me to participate. Do you want to participate? I'm like, I always want to say yes. So yes, made it super easy. So organized great energy behind it. It's like, of course I'm going to do this. Um, how do you take initiative to create things that didn't exist before? And I think everybody's openness to this is, is so heightened. You know, if I were busy at the office running around every day, I don't know if I would have said yes, but I'm here at home going desperate for desperate for interaction and desperate to, to connect with people. So I'm psyched to be part of this. Um, so reaching out to people um, and being as specific as you can about what you're asking for, I think is really important um, to recognize what, you know, who you're reaching out to and, and what you want to get out of that and to keep it as, as short as possible. I think so it's digestible for somebody because sometimes on LinkedIn, I find if the notes are really long, it's like this long scrolling thing and I get it, it can get, get a bit stressful. Whereas if you lay something out in a really digestible manner and you're quite succinct and to the point and asking for what you want, make it easy for the person to say yes, because I think most people do want to help um, and do want to support others. So if you frame things in a way that make it easy for people to say yes, that makes a huge difference. Um, I want to pause because I'm like, da, da, da. what is it that I can tell you or talk about either Reggie, you know, or people have questions like how can, how can I help? Yeah. So everybody, if you have any questions, feel free to put it in the chat. Um, or even if you want to be courageous, <laughs> unmute yourself and ask the question. I have like a ton of questions. Um, and the gems that you threw out today, Sarah, is super valuable. Like I'm here just taking notes based on, you know, what you're talking about in terms of, you know, creating opportunities. Um, you know, it's about the who, not the what, right? So who you're working for mm -hmm. and the people that you work with. Now, the way that you and I connected, like you don't know me from Jim. And like I told you on Monday, you don't know me from Jim. I don't know you from Kit. And what prompted me to engage with you was fascinating because I was just scrolling on LinkedIn and I saw this video that you posted and I was like, mind blown because you talked about, you know, job opportunities in a time where everybody's impacted. Jobs are impacted. Families are impacted. And the media kind of splashes all this propaganda that, oh man, it's a struggle. But here you are as an individual saying, hey, I need to do my part. And I want to give people hope. I want to encourage people, right? Now, I could have been like the masses and said, you know, I'm not going to reach out to you, Sarah. But there's a definition of poor that I think everybody needs to understand. And everybody needs to write this down. Poor means passing over opportunities repeatedly. I'm going to say it again. Hmm. Passing over opportunities repeatedly. Because if I did not reach out to Sarah, and slide into her DM and send her a note to say, hey, would you oblige me? And would you be able to come on to this, these Zoom sessions? And she was super open, which I loved. So what prompted you to actually put up that video? Oh, yeah, good question. It's so funny because I think that video is like everything at Aritzia is out of 10. And I'm like, ooh, I give it a 6 out of 10 average. Like I was like, this could be so much better. But I just, I didn't want perfection to stop me from actually doing something. Um, and... So I just thought, 
I talk to people on a one-off basis all day, every day. Um, but I think I forget, um, there's some really unique philosophies at Aritzia and some of the things that I think make us really successful and make me really fortunate to be there. And they don't exist everywhere. And so why am I not sharing it in a scale at a scale that can reach more than one person at a time? So um, I was telling Reggie that I was like sitting here trying to video and it's like this, like I'm a, I'm a Luddite, like I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just trying to get a video where it's like not black and you can actually see my face and all that basic stuff. But um, the, I was telling some of the, my team members, we were having our daily Zoom and they said, oh, are you going to get marketing to review it or cut it or whatever? And I was like, no, I'm like, it's not like, it's not marketing. This isn't, or this is not about packaged anything. This is just about talking to people. And it was what I was going to type. But instead of typing it, I'm like, why don't I just say it? I think that's much more interesting. And um, so that's why I just threw it up. But I was absolutely blown away by the number of connections and comments and how much people reached out just saying it's so nice to just hear something positive And it's so nice to just understand a point of view from somebody that resonates. And like, I literally did not expect that at all. Because so Sarah, you were happy. super real. That's why. Authentic. So, right and um no that, that's awesome like we have a question here from the audience yeah. um from jay law do you foresee any changes in hiring practices as a result of covid impact impacts to opportunities or offers of employment yeah so i was just talking to one of our executive members right before i came on this and i said hey like what i would say my team's job is to create a deluge of the best possible talent so that the business has a massive problem where they have to make decisions on who and how many people they're going to hire. Like that's my team's job. Well, we're at a stage now where we would normally fly somebody in or bring them physically to our office, have them do um, a, just a, a practical assignment where they would present to a few people in that department. You know, there are a number of things we normally do as part of our practice that we're not going to do the same way. We just, we can't. So yes, I do see a change in, I don't see a change in principle. I see a change in practice. So the principle I have is anything that you're going to learn about somebody in their first couple months of employment or first 30 days, you should try and learn about them in advance. So what are those things? Um, and I have a set of things that I look for in someone that I think will be effective at Aritzia. And then I have different ways of trying to glean that from somebody instead of I'm going to have to do that in a different way. And so um, the, 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 I'm still going to try to achieve the same things, but I'm going to be forced to be creative and achieve them virtually where possible. Um, or maybe, maybe some steps we've always taken um, are shoulds and they're not musts in the process. So maybe we can skip those and then measure what kind of impact that has on the quality of hiring that we're, that we're doing. So I, I think this, like so many things, this is such a cool opportunity to take stock of how we do things and not just go on autopilot, overdrive, continuous, uh, same, same. So I don't know if that answers your question. Yes, it will change. It will change the, the, the actual operational aspect of hiring, but it's not going to change the way we think about, how we evaluate talent. Okay, cool. And we have um, two more questions and I really wanna to get to these two because um, I have somebody that wants to be courageous. But before we get to that courageous person, um, Kirsten Lack has a question. Are there particular skills, attitudes or experiences that companies are seeking now that weren't five months ago? And mm -hmm. what's now more important versus what's not as important? That's a really good question. I, I can, <sighs> I think as I've been at Aritzia for so long, like I, I can speak for Aritzia. Um, I, I think what's really important is um, the ability to demonstrate starting and finishing something, uh, whether that's uh, school, athletics, arts, um, a project, volunteer work, whatever it is, but showing um, that you have the ability to start and complete something I think is really important. I think transferable skills is another thing that's super important. So um, what have you learned, like highlighting on your resume or in your discussion, what does it mean that you were the um, vice president of communications for your 
uh, club in university. So like, what does that mean? So yes, this is what I did, but what do those skills translate to? So um, I don't know that the specific skills have changed, but I think there so many people's resumes can look the same and so many people's backgrounds are similar. So whatever you could do to say, okay, this is my what, but this is why it matters. And this is how I translate it. Uh, into my career, or into how I bring myself forward, um, making again the, the concept of making it easy for me to go. Oh, yeah, that's the kind of person we want. Those types of people here. Or those skills mm -hmm. are really important in our business. I love the dog up here with <laughs> Stella. <laughs> love that dog. Yeah. All right. Cool. Um, okay. So we have three minutes left, but here's what I want to do. I want to make sure that we have Devin, who's going to be courageous enough to actually unmute himself and ask the question. Now, I know I said this, this is 30 minutes, but Sarah, if you have more time or if you, if you got to run to him, if you have a hard oh, stop. No, I'm good. I want to. OK, cool. Awesome. Okay. Love that. So we could keep the conversation going beyond 30 minutes if you want. If you need to drop off, go right ahead. We're here for you. OK, that's awesome. So and then, Lavina, I'm going to get to your question right after. OK, so Devin, let's go. Giddy up. Unmute yourself. All right. Well, thank you very much, Reggie. And thank you, Sarah. And I'll try to be really efficient about this. So how should we go about networking with senior staff at an organization, if that's even something we should do? I'd really appreciate your insight on that. Well, that's a really good question. So my my initial instinct when you say that is sometimes more senior people are not going to be active. Um, whether it's on LinkedIn or their email, they might be buried in what it is they're doing. I think you can get so much from going to a mid-level person, um, someone who might be uh, in a functional area that interests you, um, but not necessarily the CIO. Um, and not because that person doesn't care, but because they actually might not ever see what you're sending them. Uh, because of their workload. And so I think sometimes people that are closer to um, where you are today, I would hope that they're going to be really empathetic and really encouraging and want to support and share information. There's nothing wrong. I think you should reach out to whomever you want to reach out to, throw it out there. Um, but I wouldn't limit it to necessarily like the most seasoned person on the list because of access. Cool. Thanks for asking. That's a good question. Great question, Devin. Uh, we have a question from Lavina. Hey, Sarah, what you look in a person while what do you look for in a person while recruiting? As you once said, we hire people, not positions. Yes, I love it. Um, okay, so smarts. Smarts comes in all different forms. It's such a small, silly, trite word. But when I think of smarts, I think of emotional intelligence. I think of resilience. I think of uh, street smarts, you know, the ability to like navigate and like get shit done when things are complicated or cloudy or whatever it is. So I look for smarts in, in all its forms. That's not just IQ or education. Um, that can be an element of smarts, but it's not the only part of smarts. So if you have someone who's really smart and capable, um, they can learn almost anything. So that I always look for. Skills is secondary um, to that. So if you're in, we hire two, two levels of people at Aritzia, best and brightest and world-class seasoned professionals. So if you're a best and brightest, your skills aren't that important. Meaning you don't have to have a, a litany of technical skills because I think you can learn most things if you're smart. Um, if you're a world-class seasoned professional, your skills are really important. So you're gonna be ahead of manufacturing for us. We can't teach you that. You're gonna have to teach us that. So skills, depending on your level, I would say are important. Um, being a culture fit within any organization is critical. And that's about hiring the person because you can be an amazing individual and you won't necessarily be amazing at every company. So how do you figure out and how do I figure out if, if you would be amazing at Aritzia? And some people, you know, it's like you just know they're just going to slide in and, and fit within the organization. And that's so key both for you as the prospect and for the company. So I have different ways of figuring out and, and, and talking to people to figure out if they'd be a great cultural fit for the company. Um, the, the whole um, values, like does someone, is, and that's part of, 
that's linked to culture, but do you share the values of the organization? So at Aritzia, we talk about creativity, passion, commitment, initiative, discipline, you know, and we, we, we order them on purpose in terms of what we prioritize. And those things can all take different forms um, in terms of how you show up. But we find if you look at everybody that's really effective at Aritzia, those are things that you can really tick off about them that demonstrate um, that, that they show up with that allow them to be effective. So looking for smarts, skills, depending on your level, um, culture, personality, values alignment. Those are things that I look for in somebody. Okay, cool. Good question. Yeah. Great um, question. So Caitlin has a question. Uh, she says, hi, by the way. Hi. If, <laughs> if someone is to apply for a job online for Aritzia, how do you feel about the applicant reaching out to you via LinkedIn as a follow-up? How would you want them to word that follow-up message? But I think you kind of answered that too, right? You kind of yeah. encouraged it. I know. And it's my team, actually. They were like, you are crazy. Your LinkedIn inbox is going to go berserk. And you know what? It has <laughs> gone berserk. Um, but it's not, I don't complain about that because, and I really try to reply to everybody and I'm working my way through. And at night, sometimes I'm just like, okay, I got to work my way through some of this inbox. But I, I encourage you to look up whether it's me or someone on my team that is overseeing that area um, for our business. I think following up on LinkedIn is great. I don't think there's anything wrong with trying to highlight your application or say, can I shoot my resume directly to you? Because oftentimes I'll say, hey, Haley on my team looks after that area. Shoot her, here's her email and I'll throw it at you so you can reach out to her directly. So I short answer is take initiative to stand out. Um, like I said, that my inbox will get longer, but um, I, I would do it. So I, I, I think it's great. I would okay. never discourage that. Cool. Um, so, and I apologize if I get your name wrong. Um, it's Arin Tekakuchi. Um, the question that you had was very similar to um, what um, Caitlin just asked. So I hope that answers your question because it was about, you know, reaching out, um, you know, so that you could kind of stand out and um, effective and ways, I, you know. And I was just going to say again, to reiterate, keeping that succinct, because you might yeah. have a more detailed application through um, our, our workday or our career portal, but keep the LinkedIn messages tighter would be my exactly. recommendation. Yeah. Yep. So I think that, yeah, that, that answers her question. So that's great. Thank you. Okay. So um, Bridget, how do you assess cultural fit? so that it's consistent throughout the organization. Bridget, you're killing me. Is that you with the green shirt, Bridget? You're smiling. I feel like you asked me that hard question. Okay. Um, how do I assess culture? It is really not easy. Um, what I try to do, so my number one thing, I believe that your, um, if you can put someone at ease, you're going to get to know them. And so my philosophy is to be super informal. I would say I probably interview wrong. If anyone evaluated me, I'm sure textbook wise, I'm not doing it right. But I just like to put people at ease um, and to figure out through, um, uh, okay, wait, how do I explain this? Oh, I know because my team asked me this and sometimes I'm like, oh, I just want to know. I mean, you, you, you ask the person questions about, um, not just what they've done, but how they've gotten it done. And then you figure out from their how, if you think that the cultural alignment is there. I'll give you an example, because that's so vague. Um, I sometimes interview people who say, you know, um, why do you care how I get there as long as I get there? I just like it when people tell me what I need to achieve and then leave me alone. I'm like, oh, no one at Aritzia will ever leave you alone. So I think you <laughs> hate it here. <laughs> so, like, that's the truth. We are all about the path to, to getting there. It's not just about the destination because our philosophy is if you break down part way, how do I know how to come and help you? If I have no idea how you got there, if you took some back road, it's like, and you run out of gas and you call me and you're like, well, there's no signposts, but I'm kind of by that cornfield. It's like, I can't find you. So we want to show people that, um, the path to getting somewhere is just as important as the actual end destination. And so if someone hates that, they're not going to like it at Aritzia. Um, is that, I mean, that's just one example, but I try to figure out, okay, what are core tenets of how we work and how do those translate? 
And, and I always try to be really, I'm like a sieve. I'll tell people whatever they want to know in terms of truthfulness, because I only want someone to choose this if I think it's going to be a great fit for them. That That's a great answer. And that's an even better question because the way I look at it too, and you kind of set it at the top, Sarah, is that it's a difficult one to answer because your job and your team's job, I would say is probably the one of the most challenging out of the whole organization because the way I look at it and, you know, you feel free to kind of challenge me on this is that a brand is just a brand, but a brand comes to life because of people. It's driven by people and you have to have the right people managing the brand. So you and your team in terms of being that filter of analyzing, having the conversations with potential prospects is critical to the success of Aritzia and who you guys represent as a brand. And it, yes. And I'm constantly thinking about, I'll wake up thinking about it. I'm riding my bike thinking about how do I figure out if someone's going to be a really good cultural fit? Like I do not have that nailed by any stretch. So if anyone has magic answers for me, like please hit me up with that. And I'm continuing to, to try to refine that in my own mind because it's not a science. I think it's a combo of art and science and, and then, yeah, that's an ongoing effort for me. Okay. So I just want to be cognizant of your time because, I, I, again, I really appreciate you for taking the time out. And uh, there's a bunch of questions coming in. They're really good. Let's, one let's that I really want to ask you, and Anush, um, Anushka came up with it. Let me see here. Three pain points? Is that that? Um, what are the three pain points that recruiters are currently experiencing due to COVID-19 while searching for the right talent? Okay. Um, one, and I realize this is a world-class problem, but, um, relocation for us is huge. So we're based in Vancouver. All the designers that I'm interviewing are in New York, London, LA. Um, so, uh, I can't relocate people right now. Um, I can't physically bring them to our offices and I can't actually relocate them to work in our office. And I don't know exactly when I can. That is a challenge for sure. Um, Another challenge would be the volume of interest is so high. And again, I, I don't mean that like that's a world-class problem that you're getting a lot of interest in your business because we're a business that is continuing to grow, gratefully so. So um, there's, there, there's more volume to work through and we want to make sure that we maintain a really positive employment brand. And actually I got a message from someone on LinkedIn yesterday and I screenshot and sent it to my whole team before I even responded. And it was saying how impressed he was with the communication from my team at every stage of the process um, with him. And he wasn't being hired yet, but he'd gone through a few discussions and he just felt compelled to tell me that. And which is like music to my ears because we're imperfect. This is an imperfect game. Um, but I think maintaining a really strong employment brand, getting back to people, genuinely giving them good feedback or direction is, is a challenge for sure. Um, and I think probably the business's priorities, what they, what we defined as what we were going to set out to do in the next four quarters might not be the same. And, you know, th six weeks ago, we didn't know how long this was going to be. At this point, we still don't know, you know, we're starting to open our stores up. Will we have to close them again? We hope not, but we don't know for sure. So one of the challenges recruiters face is, Hey, what is the business? I thought I needed these 45 people for these different roles, but now actually those projects are going to be put on hold and we're going to do something different because different work is required to support e-commerce as a more critical uh, sales channel right now. So we may have to totally shift gears in terms of the talent we're looking for. So that those would be kind of three, like the first three things that come into my mind in terms of challenge. Yeah, it's a very overwhelming time for everybody the, you know, there's an influx, like you mentioned, in terms of volume and filtering out the resumes and to pinpoint the absolute great talent that you need to, you know, acquire is a truly remarkable process. Well, and like right. I said, you hire people, not positions. You can't tell who someone is from a piece of paper. A resume does not tell the picture. It doesn't give you the full picture. And so I have this fear of missing out on someone amazing because, because I didn't, I didn't see something in their resume because the resume is just one dimensional, um, but I can't meet every single person. So I just have this innate struggle constantly that I don't want to miss out on someone great. Um, and so 
because the applicants are increasing and increasing, that anxiety kind of increases with it. But even 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 with that, like obviously in terms of how you're facilitating conversations or interviews, it's virtual, right? Yeah. Now, what do you feel about virtual backgrounds? Oh my gosh. Like the girl I was working with who had the dog that wasn't moving and then I realized it, was a, it wasn't a dog. I was like so distracted. I'm like, that girl's dog is not breathing. Um, I don't Can you judge me if I have? Like I'm, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm with Justin just hanging out. So I'm, if, I, if I'm applying for a job at Aritzia, I'm, I'm it's not your distracted. standard background. I'm very distracted. I want you to remove it immediately. Yeah. yeah. I'd, I'd rather you see my like weird wall hanging thing. <laughs> Um, then see your background, personal preference. <laughs> see. <laughs> so everybody that was thinking about trying to step outside the box and impress, do not do the <laughs> virtual background thing. Could just Keep be natural. Mean. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, how are you looking for time? Good. Keep going. All right. This is awesome. I like it. And these are a lot of great questions. Yeah. Uh, Shona, and you know what? I want, this is, this is discover your other self. Let's get going. Okay. Devin was a great example of how we are trying to build that muscle to make you be courageous. So if you have a question, unmute yourself and ask the question. Let's do that. Reggie's just throwing it down. Do it. My question is how many people are watching the Michael Jordan documentary? So love it. I have some courage. Well, sorry, someone's talking. Yes, this is me. Uh, my name is Jandy. You can call me Jay. Jay. Sorry, I can't turn on my video because I'm in a very compromised place. So I'd rather... No problem. Um, thank you so much for being here. I just wanted to ask you a question about... Um, I'm an international student and I just graduated from FIT. Um, Congrats. Yeah, thank you. So I've been, um, so I try to intern a lot during my, um, so I, I try to like really navigate all the different markets and see you know, where my design abilities fit the, fit the best. And I sort of realized that there was always a block in terms of like employment sponsorships. I was never really able to go to the right brand because they always have these restrictions. Mm -hmm. So I'm really looking for like the right cultural fit also because I think I cannot um, design and isn't until I'm in the right place with the right people in a particular aesthetic. So I was wondering if you had any advices on um, uh, just navigating that whole situation because especially I'm, I'm hearing a lot from um, my classmates that are also international students that with the time bound issue that comes with visas that what would you um, give as an advice for that situation? Because then I feel like I'm going to have to compromise at one point or another. And I just, you know, I'm just starting on my career. So I definitely want to be adventurous and try out really amazing opportunities. And I just feel like I'm going to miss out on them because of yeah. you know me being at a disadvantage of people, that's actually one of the first questions that people ask. So it's a little discouraging because then I can't even show my work. So if you have any advices, I would love that. So just to clarify, you're in New York, but you're in, you're not a U.S. citizen. No. Got it. And so yeah. you have a certain period of time since graduating to secure employment in order to stay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. First of all, that's really challenging. Um what I would say is a couple different things. How do you make it, my theme is how do you make it easy for people? You know, um, and maybe it's a bad analogy, but you know, it's like you get the crappiest house on the nicest block. So it's like, who, who do you want to work for? And then say, I will do whatever work is required. So what do you guys need right now? What do you need? Do you need someone to like organize your fabric samples? Do you need somebody to create a system for logging you know, X, like, like, you know, whether it's direct design related or it's just adjacent to design, what can you do that just makes it easy for them? And you can say, Hey, four week assignment, here's what I could do for you. Or tell me the, the top three things that are causing you a challenge right now. And perhaps that's something that I can address for you. Like, how do you make it easy for people? And I think people are more comfortable with out of the box solutions right now, because it is a bit of a strange situation. Um, so yeah, if you can reach out, 
ask an open-ended question that's easy to answer, and then figure out how you could potentially contribute um, in a, just a foot in the door situation, because that's what I'm hearing from you. You know, you just need to get a foot in the door somewhere. And once you do that somewhere, you can say, oh, I helped this other company. It wasn't the right cultural fit for me, but here are the things I was able to do for them in a really short amount of time. I'd be more than happy to come in and help you out. I think one thing begets the other. Um, so, so reach out, um, ask open-ended questions and make it easy for somebody to say yes. And not everybody will, but, but someone, someone, I, I like to believe that someone's going to grab onto that. Thank okay. you so much. Thank yeah, you. Good luck. Cool. Uh, you know what? Let's get one more question here. Okay. Uh, let me pick one here. <laughs> With, okay, this is an interesting one. This is from Shruti. With ATS, so application tracking software, um, screen, um, with ATS screening systems in place, and especially now when you have a surge of applications or applicants, what are the percentages do you think of resume, like that resumes are looked at versus looked at or screened by a real person? Such, so, Mich yeah. Sorry? Such a good question. Mm -hmm. I'm like so excited because... I'm really anti, we have no screening systems. We just have people. And I'm probably like, I should be more open-minded to how those work and how they could potentially fit into our business. But right now I don't, I have an aversion to them because um, it was like someone on my team saying to me when my inbox was getting crazy on LinkedIn, they're like, you should give your inbox to your coordinator to manage. I'm like, how could she do that? I'm making a judgment call every single time I look at something. It's not... There's no science to that. It's judgment based on experience. So 100% of those resumes get screened by a human being is my short answer. Yeah, that's awesome because a lot of people lean towards, you know, letting AI technology kind of do their job for them. So it's good that, you know, you put a real um, authentic spin on your hiring practices. So that, that's, that's really encouraging. I remember our CEO using an example. We were in, first opened in Soho in New York and, and it was sale because we opened in summer and he was walking down the street and there were a whole bunch of retailers that just said, you know, this whole section is $99 or whatever it was. We marked down every individual item in our store. We have someone that hand marks down every item and you're like, that's a crazy amount of aggro. That's a ton of work. But it, why would you mark a black top down 50% when you know what's going to sell at 20% off, but you would mark down that weird fuchsia colored one that like no one was going to want in the first place, maybe. And you're going to mm -hmm. mark that down 70% because that's more likely to sell. So just to give this block answer is it, sort of lazy I, is for lack of a better term. We always think it doesn't matter how much work something is. You, you have the right resources to do things the right way even if that work create, even if that creates a ton of work, even if the volume of work is really high. So that's how we think about it. All right. Awesome. Okay. So that's it for the questions. I want to thank all the participants for throwing out your questions. They were really solid. Um, thank you for the ones that were very courageous and unmuted yourself. That's, that's awesome because that, that's the, a muscle that you're going to have to develop over time. So I appreciate you guys. And Sarah, what are you going to do when the dust settles? Right. First thing you're going to do when the dust settles after first this whole COVID-19 thing is over, what's the first thing you're going to do? Oh, well, I went and did a, like a TRX workout this morning and I'm like, Oh yeah. So that I have not been doing. Um, I've not been keeping up at working out of my living room as I was telling you on the phone. And so the gym I go to opened instead of having 15 people, they had four. So you were totally spaced out, but I just went for it mm -hmm. and I'm like, I'm dying, but that's what I'm going to do. I'm back at it back at the fitness. All right. Awesome. One of my, one of the, when I, one of the things I want to do, and I told everybody my first week and I'm still staying true to this because this is my goal. I want to break bread with everybody and I want all of us to go for brunch and I want people just to join me for brunch as a community. So I'm going to pose this to you. I'm willing to come to Vancouver when the dust settles and <laughs> would you go, would you be willing to have brunch with me? But if anybody in the Vancouver area wants to join us, they could all come and we could all break bread together. Would you be open to that? Oh, for sure. But I'm going to come to Toronto. I mean, I go all the time. Okay. Yeah. Even better. So 
I mean, I'm, I'm more than happy. Um, yeah, I can't, I, I'm, I'm psyched to get on a plane as soon as I'm able to and go to Toronto, go to, I mean, New York will have to wait probably, but um, Toronto's okay. in Canada. Okay. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Air high five to you, Sarah. So Ivy, Serena, you're taking note of this. Uh, um, I want you guys, everybody in the chat, if you're down to come to brunch with us, join us for brunch, say yes, put it in the chat. Ivy and Serena will take your names and we'll put you on the invite list, okay? Keep talking. Awesome. Sarah, thank you so much for being you. You are no problem. A special, you are honestly a special soul. For oh, you to thank be, you. For you to be open-minded to the idea of coming on to a Zoom series like this and inspiring others, it's so fulfilling for, just for everybody. So thank you, and you dropped some serious gems today. It's amazing. Oh. Good. I'm glad. And honestly, uh, like so happy to do it. I mean, this is, this is the fun part is getting to talk to people and share your experiences. And on a whole other zoom, I'll tell you everything I've ever done wrong. <laughs> that can be a separate topic. Yeah, zoom. That, that, that's, that's, that's brunch. The whole thing is what we have is we have brunch, but also I'm going to invite you back like later on because we, we need to give you some time. We need to give you some breathing. You're very. I'll breathing. tell you all the things I did wrong so that uh, there's no there's no illusion that this is just like it been an easy path. So thank you guys. I know it's really challenging. Um, take heart, participate, uh, put out really good energy as you are, and and I really hope great things for all of you. Thank you for coming on. Awesome. Thank you. Everybody give Sarah an air high five. Come on, Thank let's do you. it. All of us. That Love was a it. very encouraging conversation. Appreciate you so much. So good. Thanks, Reggie, for organizing and your team. Yes. Thank you.